In this lesson, we're going to figure out how to write apparent formulas for geometric sequences. Now, in order to write an apparent formula, you kind of have to know what an apparent formula is. Um, if I look at the general sequence a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, um, dot, 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 I will tell you that an apparent formula is not at all recursive, meaning it doesn't use previous values to find future values. All it's going to use are these little subscript numbers, the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 4, or the term's location in the sequence. So if I want to find the fifth term in a sequence, all I'm going to do with the apparent formula is plug in a 5, and it'll give me that value. So let me give you an example. So let's look at the apparent formula a sub n equals 5 to the nth power. Notice that I don't see any previous values. There's no a sub anything on this half of the, sequ on, of the rule. Um, here's how this rule generates a sequence. I'm going to take a sub 1. Um, to find a sub 1, I'm going to plug in a 1 into the n. So I get 5 to the first power. So with the manipulation of the 1, I get the first term. Okay, a sub 2 is going to be 5 squared. So that means it's 25. And the third term, to find the third term, I'm going to change that n to a 3 because I'm looking for the third term, and I get 125. So the sequence generated by this apparent formula is 5, 25, 125, dot, 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 or the powers of 5. This is an apparent formula. Now, they are uh, a little bit harder to write than the recursive ones, because remember, the recursive formulas uh, naturally are the way we describe a sequence. So we're going to have to think about these. Let's start with an example that's relatively simple. Okay. Let's look at 22, 44, 88, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so first thing I need to know is I need to know if it's geometric, which means I have to find a common ratio. So if I look at this, 22 times 44, oh, sorry, 22 times 2 gives me 44. 44 times 2 gives me an 88. That tells me that there is the common ratio of 2, okay? Now, as someone who's been doing a lot of math, I figured out a long time ago that a repeated multiplication is just an exponent. So whenever I repeatedly multiply by something in a sequence, what I'm really looking at is an exponent. Okay, so I know that when I see this multiplied by 2 every time, the common ratio, which every geometric sequence has, I know that the apparent formula is going to have the common ratio raised to some nth power. Now, if I look at this sequence that's generated by 2 to the n, those are the powers of 2, and that's not what I have here. Uh, 2 to the first power is 2, 2 squared is 4, and 2 cubed is 8. Those are not the numbers I need. But I do realize that, hey, there's something I can multiply each of these numbers by to get the sequence I need. So what I do is I think, well, if I take 2 and I multiply it by 11, I'm going to get the 22 that I need. Right? If I take the 4 and I multiply it by 11, I'm going to get the 44 that I need. If I take the 8 and I multiply it by 11, I get the 88 that I need. Now, the rule that I wrote generates 2, 4, and 8, but notice if I multiply the rule by 11, I get the sequence I need. Now, I can verify that this works very easily. I can take this rule and figure out what the first three terms to make sure uh, it matches. So I take uh, the sub 1 and I take 11, multiply it by 2 to the first power, I better get 22. And I do. Yay! If I plug in 2, I better get 44. I do. Yay! If I plug in 3, I better get 88. And I do. Yay! So that means I can put a big happy face next to this sequence, uh, sequence's apparent formula, because it's right. So let's do another one. Something that's a little less obvious. So let's look at the sequence 15, 45, 135, 405, dot, dot, dot. Now these numbers are growing pretty fast, so that's a good clue that it's going to be geometric. And so I can verify by trying to find a common ratio. And 15 times 3 gives me 45. 45 times 3 gives me 135. 135 times 3 gives me 405. So that's a clue to me that the apparent formula is going to have a 3 to the nth power because the common ratio gets raised to an exponent in the apparent formula for a geometric sequence. Now I just have to figure out if it works right. And if it doesn't, 
what I have to do to the sequence to, to make it work. Okay, let me change pens back. Okay, so a sub 1 uh, right now is just 3 to the first power. a sub 2 right now is just 3 squared. a sub 3 right now is just 3 cubed. Now this is just 3, okay, and I want it to be a 15. So I have to think, well, how do I turn a 3 into a 15? Well, I can add 12, but that's not going to help me here because 9 plus 12 is not 45. Or I can multiply it by 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. 9 times 5 is 45. And 27 times 5 is 135. So I figured out what I have to add to my apparent formula, which is a times 5. Box it off. Happy face. All right. So let's try one that's a little bit harder, okay? Um, let's look at this one. 4, negative 12, 36, negative 108, okay? I'm going to do the same thing. I need to verify first that it's geometric. And once I do that, I'll have what needs to be raised to the power. Okay, so a 4 multiplied by a negative 3 gives me a negative 12. A negative 12 multiplied by a negative 3 gives me a positive 36. And a positive 36 multiplied by negative 3 gives me a negative 108. So I know that my apparent formula has a negative 3 to the nth power. Okay. Now, it's not going to work. I know it's not going to work because negative 3 to the first power is negative 3. Negative 3 to the second power is positive 9. Negative 3 to the third power is negative 27. There are two things wrong. First, the sign's wrong. And second, these aren't, that 4 is not 3, 9 is not 12, 27 is not 36. So I have to figure out what I have to multiply by. This is going to take a little bit more effort. So I have to turn a negative 3 into a positive 4. Okay, so one quick way of thinking of this is, well, I have to have a denominator of 3. Because if I have a denominator of 3, those 3's will cancel. And what do I have to have in my numerator? Well, a 4. 3 times 4 thirds is 4. Oh, well, negative 3 times 4 thirds is negative 4. So if I put a little negative sign on there, it's going to work. Because this will give me a positive 4. Okay? So if I take 9, and I want to see if it works, so that means it has to be multiplied by negative 4 thirds. So if I think about this, this obviously is going to be negative. Sign's right. Yay. So then I check uh, and do my cross canceling. 9 divided by 3 is 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Oh, fancy that. And so then I do the same thing here. Well, um, it has to be a negative 4 thirds if this is the rule. Uh, negative, negative gives me the positive number I need. 27 divided by 3 is 9 times 4 is 36. So I figured out what I had to multiply by, which is negative 4 thirds. So my apparent formula is negative 4 thirds times negative 3 to the nth power. Now this is not the only way to write an apparent formula. There's another way. There's like what I call the textbook way. And this is the way that every single algebra textbook I've seen does it. And there's a formula. We know that every single one of them is going to have a uh, exponent and they're going to have something multiplied by it. So the textbook way is to always use a sub 1 and to use the common ratio raised to the stage number minus 1. And that will be the apparent formula. So where r is the common ratio and a sub 1 is the first term. Now this always works and we can verify it by looking at the other se sequences we've done. Now the rules are going to look a little different but they still work. There's always more than one answer and uh, you're about to see that. So if I take 22, 44, 88, the very first one we did and I use this formula for it, uh, a sub 1 is 22 and r is 2. So here's what the formula is according to this rule here. It's 22 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. Okay? And you're like, oh, that looks totally different. Well, but it totally works because the exponent is different. It's an n minus 1, not an n. So if I try for a sub 1, I get 22 times 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is 22 times 2 to the 0 power, 
which we all know is just 22, okay? And if I look at a sub 2, it's 22 times 2 to the 2 minus 1 power, which is 22 times 2, or 44. If I look at the third one, it's going to be 22 times 2 to the 3 minus 1, which is 22 times 4, or 88. So this sequence apparent formula um, can also be 22 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. Now this is the textbook way, this is not the, the I can figure it out by using logic way. Um, so you can either use this formula here, or you can use the way I showed you before.